Welcome to the Hike Files podcast, episode number seven. I'm your host, Kurt Zitzelman. What's going on? I've heard the question asked in the past, and maybe you have too. When's the last time you did something that you'll remember in a year from now, or five years from now, or 10 years from now? I've been pretty lucky. I've gotten the opportunity to travel to a lot of places, taken a lot of really cool trips. A lot of those I'm going to remember for the rest of my life. There is one, however. The trip was incredible, but one hike on that one trip, and I know it sounds corny, changed my life. It changed the way I think about what's important and how I should handle things that are not important. That's going to be the topic of discussion in this podcast. It's an actual hike file. Uh, A little bit of background first on the trip. Since I was a little kid, I always wanted to go to Maine. And I had a few chances to go. I could never get the trip put together the right way until 2015 when it all fell into place. I had the time. I had the money. Knew what I wanted to do. And I went. I had a couple goals on the trip. I don't usually set an itinerary. But I had a couple goals. I wanted to hike in each one of the New England states. And I wanted to make it to Acadia National Park. In my mind, I didn't do a ton of research on the trails or the geology or the history of Acadia National Park. All I knew was in a couple of the pictures I saw, the rocky coastline of Acadia National Park is exactly the the main I wanted to see. So I went. I got to the park on a Sunday after a long three-day trip up there. And I could talk about this entire trip for hours, but I'm going to focus on this one hike and the lead up going to it. So I got there on the Sunday. I got set up, explored a little bit, but it was really just getting to the park. On Monday, hit a couple of the cool spots that I wanted to see. Went to Cadillac Mountain, did the hike out to Bar Island, kind of explored the area, got my bearings as to what was going on around the park. And... My campsite was not far from the ocean path, which takes you out to Otter Cove and Otter Cliffs. Otter Cliffs, I've been to Acadia twice now. This was my first trip out out there. But even the second time I went, Otter Cliffs was the first place I went in the morning and the last place I went at night. I'd watch the sunrise from the rocks, and then at night I'd go out and look at the stars. Monday night, I'm done with my hiking and exploring for the day. I eat my dinner in camp. I walk out to Otter Cliffs, and I I meet this couple out there who are from, I think, North Carolina, and they were doing the same thing I was doing. They had a week off from work. They were just out on a road trip, and they wound up in Acadia. So as we're talking, they asked what I had done since I'd been there and what I was planning on doing for the rest of my time in Acadia. So I rattled off all the places I'd already been to, and they told me about all the places they had been. And I said, well, tomorrow I think I'm going to go hike the ladder trail. Looks pretty cool. I hiked out to the bottom of it today just, you know, to check it out and see where the trailhead is and just do a little reconnaissance. And they said, Oh, before you do the ladder trail, you need to do the beehive. I'm thinking about it. I'm like, well, I've, is that a trail? So I've seen the mountain. You drive by it. It's a small, well, small. I mean, all the mountains that are, they're like micro mountains. It's 525 feet tall. It sits right on the coast. And I will put pictures in the show notes. If you want to see some of these, feel free to either, if, it, if they don't show up in your podcast player, come over to primitiveintelligence.com. Come look at the show notes. So they, they tell me about the beehive and they say, well, it's kind of strenuous and it's it's a little challenging, but it's not that bad. And I said, well, what's the trail like? Because I know some of the trails are a little bit exposed and a little bit steep. And I said, you know, I've got this fear of heights. So I'm kind of, I'm a little iffy about the ladder trail, but you know, I don't know. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll check it out. I said, it's nothing like the precipice trail, is it? And they said, no, it's nothing like precipice. It's challenging. There's some ladders and there's some railings, but it's not that bad. We made it no problem. So I go sit on the rocks, watch the stars, head back to camp. I was sleeping in the tent back then. I get in the tent. I'm laying in the tent. I'm thinking about what I'm going to do the next day. 
fall asleep with the sounds of the buoy dinging out in the ocean. Lo- love camping in Acadia. So I wake up in the morning. It's a little chilly. Um, I should know. I did this. I did this trip. The last week of the week I went was the the end of October into the beginning of December. So I, I wake up. It's a little cold. It's it's off season. There's not a lot of people around. And I make my breakfast. I drive into town. I get some coffee. Actually, I think I think I just lied to you. I don't think I made breakfast in camp. I think I drove into town and went to the, there's a little coffee shop there called the Independent. At least the last time I was there, it was there. And I, I went there. I got a breakfast sandwich. I got some coffee. I drove back into the park and I went to Sand Beach. I decided I'm going to do the Beehive first, and then I'll go go over and do the Ladder Trail. So I get to the Sand Beach where the you're kind of across the main park road from the Beehive, which is fine. I'll park at the beach and I'll walk over to the Beehive. But I go out to the beach, and Sand Beach is interesting enough as it is, and it was a good starting point, starting at sea level, hiking right up to the top of the Beehive. So I got to the Sand Beach, and I was sleeping on the ground. It's a little cold, so I'm kind of stretching. I'm drinking my coffee, just checking out the beach, looking over at the Beehive, and just kind of looking at it like, I don't really see where a trail could go up this. And that's that's pretty straight vertical cliffs going on. It's almost vertical 500 feet to get up that side of the mountain. It's the trail's got to go, go up around in the back. So I think, so I, uh, finished my coffee and my, my English muffin or whatever I had, and I decide I'm going to head over to the beehive. So I throw some water and some snacks in my bag. Um, I had my phone for a camera. My GoPro was dead. I was doing different video style back then anyway, and I wouldn't have recorded the whole hike, but my GoPro was dead. So I figured I got my camera. I was, I got my phone. I'll just take pictures. So I hike over to the, the intersection where the beehive comes off and I see my first warning. That I, I mean, I'm glad I didn't turn back, but I kind of in some ways wish I did. And it says at the bottom something like, this is a, a vertical, a near vertical ascent. We recommend that you only climb this. Do not try to come back down. There's other ways down. And then you you see this in some hiking spots or some spots are a little more dangerous. And they'll say, you know, if you fall, you could hurt yourself up to and including the possibility of death. This, I think, was a little more blunt. I think it just basically said, if you fall, you're dead. <laughs> It was really specific, big yellow and black sign, big, big warning sign. And I looked at it and I said, well, that couple I talked to last night said it wasn't that bad. Uh, I'll keep going. So you approach the base of the mountain and it's just a hiking trail. It's, it's nothing major. A couple little climbs until you hit this spot that is... The blaze, there's boulders in front of you, and there's a blaze right in front of you, and it doesn't go to the left or right. You look up the next boulder, and the blaze is up there. you got to climb up the boulders. You climb up the couple boulders, and it levels off. And then there's a little ladder, and it levels off. And then there's another climb, and it levels off. And then you get to a spot where you realize you're not climbing back down this easily. And the first quarter of it, not so bad because there's you're, there's trees. You're still in tree cover for the most part. It's when you get above those trees and you get up to about three to 400 feet up the side of this mountain. And it's just these real tight switchbacks back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they're getting tighter and steeper and closer, but higher away from each other until suddenly you're above the tree line. And this is where my fear of heights kicks in because now it's exposed and you've got rock wall on one side and a drop off on the other. And now you're above the trees. So there's really nothing to the right. 
well, there's nothing to one side. I should say probably uh, you're probably looking at the south side of the mountain at that point. So there's nothing to your south and to your north is the side of the mountain. And it's like a wall next to you. And this is where it starts to hit me that my fear of heights is really going to kick in. But I keep going. Now, mind you, I am there by myself. I've got no one telling me I should do this. I've got no one telling me I shouldn't do this. It's a Tuesday in off season in Acadia National Park on a trail that's probably not the most popular. Anyway, I'm there by myself. I'm just out there doing it I, on on a whim, on the suggestion of strangers I met the night before. And my heart's starting to race. And I'm starting to get a little bit of uh, vertigo. So I find a spot where there's a, a, a tree kind of in along the path. And I can get behind the tree, between the tree and the rock. And I kind of I sit down and I put my back against the tree and I kind of try to forget about the three to 400 foot drop off behind me. And I'm just looking at the rock face and I let my heart rate come down and I get up, I go a little further and I find another spot. I can do that. And I sit down and I sit a little bit longer and I realize I got to keep telling myself, you got to get up and move because if you don't, you're going to have to call for rescue because at some point you're just going to stop trying and it keeps getting tougher and tougher and the trails getting narrower and narrower. Then you get to the spots where there's no trail. There's, there's a, like a railing, uh, iron rail that they've hammered into the rock on the side. And then there's like a, a wood boardwalk or like a grate that they've hammered into the side to get across because there's nothing there. So you're going from like rock ledge to rock ledge across these little boardwalks. And that doesn't make you feel any better when your fear heights start kicking in. I'm going to pause here for a second and say, I've talked to other people that have done this trail who don't have a fear of heights. And they all say, oh, it wasn't that bad. I mean, it was, it was steep and it was interesting, but it wasn't that bad. When the fear of heights kicks in, when it's a legitimate fear of heights, trust me, it is that bad and worse. I get to a spot and I've got, I take a picture because it's just the craziest thing I've ever seen. I take a picture of it and I've since taken that picture, put it on a canvas and it's hanging in my living room. I've had it hanging on a wall since I got back from that trip. Just to remind me that I did this trip. The trail's about two and a half to three feet wide. It's a sheer vertical rock face on the left-hand side. And on the right-hand side, it just drops off and there's nothing. As you look forward, you're looking out at the ocean. Now, keep in mind, it's autumn. So there's like the fall colors in the trees and you got the ocean out in the distance. And as I'm looking down, I realize that this little bear patch I'm looking at is the parking lot that I'm parked in. And my Jeep is a little tiny speck down there. And there's another, I think there was another little boardwalk to go across there, or there was like a rock hump or something I had to go over. I forget what, what exactly was right there, but you get to the end of that. And it seems like the trail ends. Now, mind you, fear of heights, having vertigo, hearts racing, incomplete panic attack for probably 20 to 30 minutes now. I'm completely freaking out. There's no one to tell me you're going to be okay. I can't turn around. I know that. All I can do is keep going forward. And now I'm standing at a spot where this little narrow trail ends and to continue on you've got to kind of reach around this rock face to where you can kind of see rungs but there's nothing in front of you so you've got to make this blind semi-blind reach around this boulder to get onto rungs that are on the face of the rock and then climb up and I froze. I had no idea what to do. I'm and in my mind. I'm like, I, I got to turn around. I can't do this. And then I start thinking about what I had to come up and some of the climbs, not, not steep, but, or not, not high, but they're kind of at a weird angle. So you kind of climb, you'd be going down on a negative incline. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm not going to do that. 
I, I could call for rescue. Right? <laughs> for a second, that went through my mind. I, thought, ah, I can't do that either. So I just leaned against a rock for a minute and, and focused just on where I was and took a couple deep breaths and just said, all right, hopefully I'm almost at the top. I had no idea how far I was. I had no idea how long I'd been on a trail. Time is completely distorted when you're in a, a panic attack like this. And so I, I reach over, I grab onto the rung, and I'll never forget it. Not ever, not as long as I live. But I could feel every pit, every every bump, every seam, every little bit of those rungs I could feel. I imagine it's if Spider-Man was real is what he would feel as he was climbing on a wall. All right. Like hyper aware of these rungs, knowing that if I slip, I'm dead. So I'm, it's just me holding on to these iron rails that are hammered into rocks. And I'm thinking the only way I'm going to fall is if these rungs pop out or the entire rock face comes loose and it all just comes down. So I'm holding on, I mean, so tight, climb up and you get to a spot where there's no more rungs and, but you're not, you're not level. You're still at a pretty steep angle, but it's now just a, you got to scurry up the face of this rock vault to get up to the top. Thankfully to the top. So I scurry up the rock. I get up there and I see their marker they have for the summit. And I am not the kind of person to summon a mountain and yell and, you know, you know, like victoriously like, yeah, I did it. But you better believe that just the release of stress and that fear of heights and the adrenaline and all of it, having made it up there, they heard me in banger. There's no way they didn't. I mean, I just let out a, like a woohoo. Like as loud as I could. And then I took my pack off and it's a big rock ball. And I just put my pack on the ground, laid on it like a pillow. And I just sprawled out on this open rock face on the top, of this little mountain in Maine. And I just let my heart slow down because <laughs> it was, I have a picture of me at the summit and you could see the terror in my face. So I still have to get back down. Right. But I know there's ways to get down that don't include me having to go back down this trail. So I pick a trail back down. I want to go over to Gorm mountain. I think it is. Uh, so I take the trail. It takes me around over to Gorm mountain and this whole time you're kind of going around the outer side of a ridge. You're still up like the beehive is, kind of connected to a couple other mountains. So you kind of come down a little bit and then you go up to Gorm mountain and you can look back at the beehive. So every chance I get, I kind of look back and I'm looking at this trail that I just came up and I'm looking at how vertical it is. And it starts to dawn on me that that was legitimately probably the most dangerous thing I'd ever done in my life. And I did it on my own with no help with no no one goading me on no one tell me I couldn't do it or I could do it I just did it and suddenly anything that was going on in my life up to that point like my job was tough it was it was just a it was I was in management it was a it was a rugged job it was tough the decisions that had to be made and the way as usually happens when you're in a job like that, everything is everything that everyone else wants you to do. The people above you, the higher ups, everything that they want you to do is always the most important thing. And it's always life or death. And it's, if you don't get this done, it's the end of the world. And I suddenly had this new appreciation for how little all that meant. 
it meant absolutely nothing. Because very easily, I could have fallen from that mountain and somebody else could have done that job. And it really meant nothing. And then I'd hike a little further and I'd look back and I think, I, I did that by myself. And I hike a little further and look back and I just kept on getting these, like this sense of accomplishment of actually doing it. And I know if you've hiked a beehive and you don't have a fear of heights, you're thinking, this guy's an idiot. Like that was the easiest thing I've ever hiked. Different hikes are different for everybody. So I keep going. I get back down to the car. I decide I'm not going to do the ladder trail. I go back to camp instead. I actually drove over, checked out a, another part of the park, just drove around a little bit, went back to camp, and it was only about 2 o'clock or so. And then all of a sudden, once I realized I was at camp and I could I could relax a little bit, the the crash from all the adrenaline hit, and I, I thought I could just climb in a tent and go to sleep right now. But it's only 2 o'clock, so I just left the car at camp, and I, I walked down the road, checked out a couple things on foot, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know it sounds so weird to say that a hike changed my life. And I wasn't in any immediate danger. I didn't fall. You know, no rocks landed next to me. I wasn't cornered by a grizzly bear or anything like that. It was just the terrain and the challenge that it gave to me is the, the effects still govern the things I do today. I know that different fears manifest differently for other people. And it's not always easy, practical, or possible to put yourself in a situation to face those fears. If you can, I, I don't recommend you go full bore right off the bat. And if you're afraid of spiders, jump into a vat of spiders, but push yourself a little bit. Put yourself in a situation that pushes your comfort level. Do something you'll remember for the rest of your life. You won't regret it. Thank you so much for listening to my story. I hope you enjoyed it. I will talk to you in the next episode of the Hike Files podcast. Yeah.